Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Chris Winter and in this video, I'm gonna do an in-depth review of the brand new Nikon D5600 and see if it's the right camera for you. By the way, if you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe as I'm actually gonna be giving away a Nikon D3400 or a Canon T6 to a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button now to enter into the draw. And guys, also, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely make sure to check out my brand new list, the top 10 best DSLRs under $1,200. Now, the Nikon D5600 makes the list, but it doesn't come in at number one. So if you do want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description box below under this video, and you can take a look. But anyway, let's review the Nikon D5600. So let's get started by taking a look at the build quality and features of the new Nikon D5600. So when you first pick up the D5600, I've got to say, it really does feel nice. Now, the D5600 is targeted towards, you know, either beginners or photographers who want to step up from a beginner camera, and I think it fits this purpose just right. Now, just for comparison's sake, this is the Nikon D3400, which came out just a few months ago, and it's actually the little brother to the D5600. Now, as you can see, they're quite similar in size, but when you get it in your hand, the D3400 actually feels a little bit bigger than the bigger brother, the D5600. It's got a smaller grip, I'd say, on the D5600, and it does feel a little bit easier to carry around. So for me, I actually prefer the grip on the D5600. The camera itself does feel solid and that allows me to know that I can throw on a heavier lens or a mic on top and have no problems. Button placement's good, nothing too different to Nikon bodies, although you will notice that with a flip screen, a lot of the buttons that are normally on the left are now on the right. So overall, the D5600 feels really quite good. Now it's not too heavy and it's not too light. I think it's kind of in that sweet spot for a DSLR. By the way guys, if you'd like me to do a full-on head-to-head comparison between the D5600 and the D3400, comparing which one will be best for you, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on this video. So let's now turn the D5600 around and take a look at the LCD screen on the back. And this is where things get exciting. The D5600 is one of the small number of DSLRs from Nikon to have an articulating screen. And it's actually a really good one at that. So compared to some cameras from other brands, the D5600's articulating screen is the real deal. And it can be flipped up, down, back, forward, and even to face you in front. Now that might seem like kind of an insignificant feature, but for people who film themselves like I'm doing right now, being able to flip the camera forward so you can actually see yourself and get that right composition is a pretty big deal. Not only that, having this articulating screen really allows you to get shots from up high or down low, which is something that's a little bit difficult normally if you're just relying on the viewfinder. The screen itself is really quite good. You know, I was really impressed with the screen from the baby brother, the D3400, and the D5600 is equally as good. One other thing that I really like about the D5600 screen is that it's a touch screen, and I don't know why more DSLRs don't include that. They just make it so much easier to navigate around and change your settings really, really quickly, and it's a nice feature on the D5600. So overall, the articulating screen on the D5600 is an impressive feature and it's probably one of the highlights on this camera. By the way guys, let me know in the comments below if you could win a Nikon D3400 or a Canon T6, which one would it be and why? And I'll take a look at your comments. So I quickly wanted to touch on the menus on the D5600. Overall, they were really quite good with a lot of information and settings at your fingertips. Now if you've ever used a Nikon DSLR, you'll feel right at home with the menus on the D5600. You know, but if you are coming from a Canon or Sony or Panasonic background, it might take a little bit of time to get used to. But again, coming back to this touch screen, it's so much easier getting around the menus rather than having to press the buttons up and down. All you need to do is jump to there, hit that, and you're all good. By the way, guys, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely make sure to check out my top 10 list of the best cameras for under $1,200. I think you'd be quite surprised to see what comes in at number one. I'll put a link in the description box below under this video, and you can take a look. Now, if you think about purchasing the Nikon D5600, there's a good chance that you would have taken a look at some of the competitors in that kind of market. Firstly, on the cheaper end, the recently released Nikon D3400 is another option to look at. You know, it's cheaper than the D5600, but it is importantly missing that articulating screen and the touch screen. Then you've got the predecessor to the D5600, which is the D5500, and it's definitely one that you would have looked at. Now, it's quite similar to the D5600, but it is missing a few things, including that SnapBridge wireless system, which means that you can't really wirelessly transfer your photos to your phone. It's also missing a time-lapse feature as well, which might be something you might be into. On the higher end, we've got the D7200. It's a little bit bigger and has great autofocus, but again, it doesn't have that articulating screen and it's also more expensive. So on the Canon side, the D5600's big competitors are the T6i and T6s, and also perhaps the 70D and 80D. 
Now all of those cameras have similar features with articulating screens and also touch screens, but I've got to say that the 70D and the 80D have much better autofocus than all the other cameras. If you guys would like me to do some head-to-head -head comparisons between these cameras and the D5600, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on this video. Now earlier this year I reviewed the Nikon D500, which is a professional camera, and also the Nikon D3400, which is a beginner camera, and both of those cameras included SnapBridge. And to my pleasure, the Nikon D5600 also has it. So SnapBridge is essentially a wireless technology, which allows you to transfer photos from your D5600 to your smartphone. You know, it's a great feature for beginners and pros alike, especially if you like to share your photos on places like Facebook and Instagram. How well does it work? Well, to be totally honest, it's definitely not perfect. Getting it connected and paired up sometimes takes ages, which is a little bit disappointing, especially compared to the likes of Panasonic's cameras, which work a lot smoother. But once you do get it paired up and running, it actually works pretty well, and it's one of the nice features to have on the Nikon D5600. So let's talk about video now on the D5600. So over the last few years, Canon, Sony and Panasonic have really taken over the video market with a couple of great cameras. But I think for a lot of people, the D5600 might be a really good choice, especially for budding filmmakers or YouTubers. Like I said before, having this articulating swiveling screen really makes a big difference for video. It allows you to hold your camera at a better level or on a tripod and really get your composition correct. Now the D5600 does have continuous autofocus in video, but compared to cameras like the 70D or the 80D from Canon, it's still nowhere near as good. It does work, but I wouldn't bet my life on it. The D5600 also has time-lapse mode as well, which is a really nice inclusion. Now this was included on the Canon 80D and I actually found myself using it quite a lot, so having it on the D5600 is a nice feature. And if you do like to shoot slow motion, the D5600 does shoot in 60 frames per second as well, which means you can take the shots in 60 frames per second, take it to your timeline, and then slow it down to get some nice slow motion. So overall, if you're looking for a great DSLR for video, the D5600 might not be the best, but it's pretty good. Now just quickly I want to touch on the battery life of the D5600, and I found it to be okay. Now the D3400, which came out a few months ago, blew me away with its battery life. You know, I was getting 1200 to 1300 shots on that little beast. With the D5600, I'm getting around 500 to 600, and that's a pretty big difference. Now it's not the worst battery life I've ever seen on a DSLR, but if you know you're gonna be shooting for a full weekend, you might wanna stock up on a few spare batteries. So let's talk about the burst mode on the Nikon D5600 now, and it shoots at five frames per second, which, just for reference sake, sounds a bit like this. For most people that's going to be more than enough and it should be quick enough for some sports and wildlife shooting. Obviously if you really want to get into the world of sports and wildlife photography you might want to look at something like the Nikon D7200 or even the D500 but again for beginners and for most people five shots per second is going to be more than enough on most occasions. In terms of autofocus the D5600 performed well. Again it's not at the level of the D500 or the D7200 but it was able to lock onto most objects when I needed it to. I think if you throw in a nice fast focusing lens, this is gonna be a pretty good combo for most people. So overall, I've been very pleased with the Nikon D5600. Is it a huge upgrade from the D5500? Well, not really, but this is a great camera for not only photographers, but also those in video as well. And having that wireless capability is a huge addition. So good job with this one, Nikon. Now, if you guys haven't done it yet, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button to go into the draw to win either a Canon T6 or a Nikon D3400. And also definitely make sure to check out my top 10 list of the best cameras for under $1,200. That link will be in the description box below under this video. You can take a look. Hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Bye.